So, you want to learn how to get good at Supercross 4, do you guys? Well, I got a video today with some tips and tricks, about 10 of them. That should help you guys out. Some of them are probably just personal preference. The other few that are really important in my opinion should help everybody out and should work for everybody. Since my MXGP 2020 video did so well, I'm selling out, doing it again in Supercross 4. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Oh yeah, and these are in no particular order at all, so uh, just a heads up. But I'll point out the more important ones, so let's get into it. Coming in at number 10, we got the preload, baby. Now, I don't know how many of you guys knew there was a preload in this game or any milestone game, but I didn't find out until MXGP 2020. I always kind of felt like there was a preload, but I wasn't really sure how to do it or activate it. But um, in this game, if you want to do the, pre the preload, you just have to pull back on both your sticks. You will go really high in the air and you will go much further. So I would highly recommend it. I'll show you a couple of examples of what I mean by that right here. So coming into this rhythm section, I try to get the same amount of entry speed. Right there, I preload. I do mess up the section, but then right here, you can see how much further I did go when I preloaded. It's like that anywhere when you do preload. Now a couple more examples here on Anaheim 2. Right here I don't preload and I case the shit out of that triple and I mess up my whole rhythm. Here I preload and you can see how much further and easily I make it over that. Um, another example right here, I'm not preloading coming out of this corner, case the triple, case this triple, and then I even case the next triple slightly. And then I show you that uh, how much further you can really go when you preload. Just look at the distance I'm gaining in and I'm just preloading there. Um, so yeah, preloading is at number 10, highly recommend it. Number 9 we got manual shifting or manual transmission. This is so important, especially in Supercross. In the motocross games it might not matter as much, but in Supercross it matters a ton. Manual shifting can really help you when you're exiting corners and especially in the whoops because if you are in automatic transmission in the whoops you're just going to be stuck in third or maybe even second gear and you're going to be losing a ton of time coming out of corners you can hit the bigger line so much easier in manual transmission and it's just so uh, beneficial so i'll show you a couple examples of that right here so coming into this corner i want you to pay attention to my speed in the bottom right now when i'm in manual transmission i get up to about 78 kilometers per hour and then I'm going to show you two clips just so um, you can see how consistent it is or whatever with whatever. And then when I get right here, I'm in automatic transmission. You can see I'm only getting about 65 at the max. That's about like a 10, 11, 12 kilometer speed difference. And that is a lot. Now here on Glendale, I get up to about 88 kilometers per hour in manual. And then automatic, I get about 74, which is about a 14 to 15 difference in kilometers and that is quite a bit. Automatic transmission typically just has you in third or second gear in the whoops, maybe fourth if you're lucky, but manual is definitely the way to go. You gain so much time just in the whoops alone. So yeah, number nine, we got manual transmission. At number eight, we got don't hit the big lines. They're just not worth it, man. The big lines in this game, there's probably one or two on every track but they just aren't really that much quicker, even if you do hit them. They're pretty hard to hit in this game, and when you do hit them, you're going like maybe half a tenth quicker on some tracks, and then on other tracks, they're actually slower. They're just more fun to hit. I wouldn't recommend hitting them at all. If you wanna have fun, sure, go for it, but if you're doing races like in leagues or online or whatever, I really wouldn't uh, suggest hitting them because they're just really difficult to get. If you're doing time trial, I guess I would suggest hitting more of the big lines because most not most of them some of them will improve your lap time so if you're a time trial player the big lines obviously hit some of them because they will be faster but if you're just in a race man they're really not worth it because you're just most likely gonna mess up like 90% of the time even when you do hit it you're not gaining that much time at all really maybe it's for like a last lap send type thing or maybe you hit your line perfectly coming into a corner and you want to just send it you can do that but like right as you can see right here i'm just uh using the rewind but it's just um I, i've it takes me like three or four tries to get it 
even with the rewind. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't really recommend hitting the big lines because they're just not worth it. It's all about consistency when you are playing these games, especially if you're racing online or in leagues. So yeah, don't go for the big lines and you should um, do a lot better. At number seven, you just gotta keep low, man. This one may sound a little obvious to most people, but hey, maybe you don't know how to keep very low in this game. There's a couple of things you can do. The main thing, if let's say you're going, you're about to jump onto a, an on-off tabletop, you just kind of lean your bike over to the left or right, whichever way you really prefer. Just a little bit though. And then you want to push your right stick forward, or you can just push both your sticks forward. Um, I'll put some clips in the background so you can see. And then um, if you're going to hit like a big triple or double, whatever, more steeper jump, you just kind of do the same thing. Lean your bike to the left or the right slightly and just push forward with your right stick. Or you can push forward with both your sticks. And this will basically replicate a scrub and you will stay super low. There's no need to really um, do the scrubs that are already in this game because they are a little bit kind of clunky and they may throw you off the track. But this, I find it is a lot more consistent and easy to do and it does keep you very low. It's almost like doing the wheelie glitch, which I will talk about later. Um, but yeah, the uh, push your sticks forward uh, is a good way to keep low. And uh, obviously the lower you're going, the less time you are spending in the air. And so basically you're just going to get a little quicker if you uh, master this little technique. Um, it's not like the most important necessarily, but if you can really get this down, it helps you get a nice flow. And it feels super good so yeah just keep low and it'll be good number six we got downshift instead of braking this one is all really about personal preference most people are probably gonna think I'm crazy for suggesting this but on this lap you're seeing right here I only use my brakes in the first corner after the finish line that is the only corner I use my brakes in at all you don't really need to um, use your brakes on much of the tracks it does depend really on what section you're going through or whatever but if you're going down like a straightaway, use your brakes, okay? Slow down. But if you're going into like a 90 degree corner or even a 180 corner, you don't really need to use your brakes at all, especially the front one. The reason why I don't prefer to use my front brake as much is because it kind of unsettles the bike, makes you go a little squabbly. But if you just downshift, you really do keep your momentum going and you don't really uh, lose control of the bike. It is pretty stable. Now again, this is all about personal preference, and it kind of does depend on the track and the section you're going through. But if you do not ride like this, just give it a try and see how you feel. Um, for me personally, I find it helps me get those uh, big lines better, and I find it just really keeps my momentum going, and I just love riding like that. Um, yeah, I, I honestly use my back brake more, and I'll get into that later. But uh, yeah, at number six downshift instead of braking most of the time depending on which corner and which track you're on which which section whatever so uh yeah number six just downshift number five we got use the back brake now this one does kind of contradict what i just said a couple seconds ago but hear me out i'm gonna try to give a couple clips a couple pointers in those 180 degree benders they really help you out they help you get the angle help you square up or whatever especially for this big line right here that you can hit I do mess it up, it is really tricky, but it is much better than just trying to turn with both the sticks most of the time because it does set you up for the next jump or it gets the angle just right. And it's all about the angles, all right? It's all about the angles. But you do have to be very careful when doing this because it is super easy to slide out as you can see. Um, it does take a little bit to kind of master this technique. Um, sometimes you can hold it and then just pin the throttle. Sometimes you just give it a little tap, 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 roo, and then hit the throttle. It really depends on the corner and on, I guess, your setup mainly. Um, but yeah, certain corners, this works really well in, um, especially on the flat kind of 180 turns or flat 90 degree turns, whatever it may be. Um, it all depends really, uh, if you really want to do it or not, but, uh, yeah, number five, use the back brake. I know I just said don't use your brakes as much, but and sometimes you do need to use your brakes, and sometimes the back brake is really useful, and I would recommend it because 
it helps you out, helps me out to get those fast times, whatever, helps me out to go fast. So yeah, just use your back brake at certain turns and you'll be good. Number four, we got in-air control. Now, for those of you who didn't know, you can move your bike side to side in the air, only sometimes though. And you can also move your bike downwards in the air. And I'll try to show a couple clips of examples but let's say you're gonna jump off the track. You can kind of move your bike sideways to land back on the track. It only works sometimes though. Um, it's really weird because sometimes it'll let you move in the air and other times it will not. It really depends. This can also help you hit your lines better. And then with the moving downwards, this can help you not over jump something. I'll try to put a couple examples up if I can. Um, I really seem to notice them. When you're going for those super big lines, and you just hold down on the left stick, your bike immediately goes downwards and you will not over jump certain things. It does depend on the section, jump, whatever. It will not work 100% of the time. But if you get this technique down, this can actually really save you. It works for me. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but I definitely have. Um, it's just a little pointer. And then if you want to move back on the track, side to side kind of thing, you just move the left stick left or right pretty straightforward. Um, you do kind of have to get a feel for it because sometimes, again, it works, sometimes it doesn't. And the same thing goes with moving downward. But this is a great tip on how to keep you from crashing or keep you from messing up a section. So yeah, number four, we got in-air control. Number three, we got fifth gear in the whoops. I did kind of explain this earlier with my uh, manual shifting tip or whatever, but I thought I would explain it again just in case people were wondering or they didn't realize or whatever. But yeah, fifth gear in the whoops is the way to go. Even if you're in fourth, you are going quite a bit slower, judging by the speed, like the kilometers, mile per hour thing in the bottom right. And you can also notice it yourself. Even in a short whoop section, fifth gear is the way to go. So just to click a little pointer um, in case you were wondering. Number two, we got use both of your sticks when turning. This one is just a quick little tip here. Um, this one only really applies in these bendy 180 corners with big berms. You don't need to use both sticks on flat corners if you're using your back brake. If you're using your back brake, definitely do not use both sticks, just use the left stick. But if you wanna get that extra rotation, use both of your sticks. It really helps out, especially in the corners with big berms. So yeah, just a quick little pointer right there. At number one, we got the wheelie slingshot. That's what I like to call it. Some people call it the wheelie glitch. It's not really a glitch, it's more of just abusing the game's physics. This was a big thing in MXGP 2020, and in Supercross 4 it is a really massive thing. Now in Supercross 3, it was more so the front end slingshot where you would dive your front end down, bounce into the jump, and you would just slingshot forward. In this game, Supercross 4, it is all about doing the wheelie glitch. You've probably seen it in all my other clips. Um, I definitely abuse this a lot because it really helps you get through a section if you mess up or it helps you get those big lines. It also helps you stay really low. It is really good on this track, Glendale. You can really abuse it here. But on every track, it's it works everywhere, um, pretty much on every jump. If you come up short on something, you just do a little wheelie glitch and you can slingshot and bounce forward and you should be good. Um, super easy to do. All you have to do is just pull back both of your sticks until you're in that kind of wheelie position. And then just as you're about to come off the top of the jump, you push forward and it kind of just slingshots you forward and you also stay really low and you're not going to come up short really ever on it on anything. Even if you do, you can still just slingshot again with the wheelie glitch. Sorry, wheelie slingshot, my bad. But uh, yeah, this thing... Um, you can probably gain upwards of over a second on a lap if you just abuse the wheelie slingshot. Um, if you're just trying to go around the track normal, you can still go quick, but the wheelie slingshot is the way to go, especially over dragon's backs. It really helps out with those things. You've probably seen in my fast lap videos or on these clips, whatever, if I've gone over them, but dragon's backs over any jump, the wheelie glitch is the way to go. It shoots you so far, you cannot, it's kind of like preloading and slingshotting yourself forward at the same time and staying low. It's just super useful and it's super easy to uh, get through a section very cleanly. If you want to hit a section like whoops, you still can kind of do that in this game. 
only on certain jumps and only in certain sections. But if you just wheelie, you can kind of still hit the section like whoops. But yeah, number one, the wheelie glitch is the most important thing, I think, to get you fast. Um, so yeah, those are all of my tips and tricks. Um, I know you guys probably want a bike set up, that's in a separate video. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of any of these tips down below. Let me know if you think they work for you or not, or if I missed any. But uh, without further ado, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.